Hi everybody. Today is Saturday. It is September 22nd, 2012. And I know I haven't been around in a long time. I don't know how long it's been since I've made a video. But uh, I felt it necessary today to share with you some of what I have been going through. And not just myself, but what so many of us go through. Uh, people that have not gotten tested yet for hepatitis C, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are in this world. Please, please, please get tested. It is a world pandemic. It is getting worse every day. And I'm going to tell you guys, baby boomers, the CDC, which is the um, uh, Canadian Disease, oh my goodness, CDC, what does it stand for? It's the Disease Center. Um, the Canadian Disease Center and all over the world has asked that baby boomers especially are the hardest hit if born between the year 1945 and 1965. We urge you to get tested. It is a simple blood test. Hepatitis C, guys, and so many are disinformed about this disease is not hepatitis A or B. It is not transferred by sexual fluids or any other fluids. It is blood to blood only. It amazes me today, 2012, how many people are ignorant to this disease and don't want to know about it and yet they may be one of the ones affected, one of the ones that is passed it, passing on this disease. It is called the silent killer. Not everybody has symptoms. 75% of us don't have symptoms. The longer this disease stays in your body, the more damage it does. Here is the truth. Here is what no one else has told you. Now, I've told you this before. Let me assure you, I have studied this extensively. One thing, if you have had or you know anyone that has had mono in the past, mono is what doctors called it. Mononucleosis is what they called it when it was still non-A, non-B hepatitis. Mono, I believe, after having done as much research as is possible, is the first sign of us getting the disease. I had mono when I was in my early 20s. I was laid off for, six, for three months, a six-month total, three months. I thought I was better. I went window shopping. I was laid up another three months. I was so sick, I couldn't do anything. I believe that that some people experience that as the onset of this disease. If this disease were to be treated within the first year of diagnosis, you would have a 99.7% success rate, people. Kids get tested, tattoos, piercings, fighting, um, anything that has blood to blood transfer, nail clippers, you know, people that bite their nails and you get those little sores and you shake somebody else's hand that has a little sore on their hand. Think about it. Um, it's spread blood to blood. Now, what I really want to talk to you about today, and it comes from my personal journey, my hepatitis C journey. I am, and everyone else I talk to online and in, in person on a daily basis, there is no one that's had this disease for uh, 10, 15, 20 years that isn't affected by other diseases. Uh, it inflames every organ in your body. It lodges in your brain. It does damage as it goes. Diseases feed off one another. You can't put one disease diabetes, cancer, hepatitis C into a silo, as a great friend of mine, Bill Remack, would say, they are not silo diseases, they feed off one another. So what happens is, for example, what I've been able to ascertain, and I am not a doctor, but I do do a lot of research, is that 
due to the inflammation, the daily inflammation in your body, it's triggering other cells. 80% of most cancers comes from this disease. One third of type 2 diabetes comes from this disease. I am a walking example, people. I will tell you, I am two years post-treatment as of July. I have never gotten back the energy I once knew. I don't know if it's environmental. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. I've never felt the same again. I've never felt great again. Uh, I have my bad days. I have my good days like everybody else. I look good. I know <laughs> that used to piss me off when people said I look good and I was on treatment. Oh my God, that pissed me off. But here's the thing. Um, since I've had hepatitis C diagnosis, I have also been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome disease, which is shitty to say the least. Don't really want to talk about it much. It's not, it's, it's horrible. It could ruin your own wedding if it hit you and it blindsides you and stress brings it on the most. Uh, fibromyalgia stems from this too. I have osteoarthritis. I have osteoporosis. I have degenerative disc disease. I have uh, scoliosis, which I was born with, but because of these other conditions, it is now twisting my spine. I live in constant pain, daily pain. The bones in my neck, the cartilage goes thinner and thinner and thinner with each vertebrae. The last vertebrae is like a, a little a shard and it pinches my nerves in my neck. I, I am in constant pain uh, every day, every day, but you get used to it. You live through it and it becomes a part of you. Well, I finally changed doctors and went to see someone new on the advice of so many others. Over three months ago, I went to see my doctor. I had blood in my stool. It was obvious. It was fresh. It was there. He sent me away, didn't do a single test knowing my history. I finally went to another doctor. I have now been diagnosed with uh, high blood pressure, and he's got me on heart medication for that. My potassium levels were really high. He seemed very concerned. I asked him why. He said, well, if they go too high, your blood just, your heart just stops. It just stops. I have also got, uh, been diagnosed with pre-diabetes or borderline diabetes, as they call it. They're looking at possible kidney disease. There is still blood in all of my stool samples. This doctor did a bigger run-up on me than they did when I had hep C. I've never seen so many boxes ticked off. My blood, white blood counts were low. Since then, they've normalized again. My potassium's gone back down. My blood sugar levels are a little better. Uh, we have to keep a close eye on it, but the worry now is colon cancer. I did have, because of the blood in my stool, I have to go in for another colonoscopy. My specialist has just gotten back from vacation. He assures me that it's a slow-growing cancer and that he doesn't think I have it due to my tests two years ago. And I am choosing to believe in that right now. I don't feel as though I have cancer. I knew there was something else wrong with me though. You know how you know it when you have hep C and you just know there's something wrong but nobody can put a finger on it. It's like that. So anyway, to deal with it myself, I went out. I haven't been working. You haven't seen me around much. The website is down due to lack of funding. I haven't done any funding campaigns. I've done the odd 50-50 raffle for Hepatitis C Global Initiatives. But basically the charity's on hold until I can find like-minded people to really jump in there and help me run it. Uh, what else? I've been working on my book. But when I got all these diagnoses, I was a walking zombie for a little while as would be expected and uh, I've since taken a little bit of time off work I have bought myself a rubber dinghy and that is how I deal the ocean is my my peace it's my solitude it's where I find what we all look for every day and that is that inner peace it goes away out there there are no bills there are no worries it's been really hard catching up on bills since 
both my my spouse and I have taken ill. It's been a really really long way back but happiness is a choice. I have learned that and I am choosing to be happy and I just want you all to know please go get tested. If you've been to the dentist there's blood, there's the lights they touch, the cleaners don't. I've told you all this before. Look back through the videos and please, everybody that is watching this that doesn't know about hepatitis C, it's a simple blood test. However, it is not included in your regular blood work where they run you for HIV and all those other things. It is a separate test. You do have to demand it. Sometimes, well, many, many times I've heard doctors send people away and say you're not at risk demand the test, they have to give it to you in in America anyway, in the rest of the world. I don't know the policies, but uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm all over Facebook with this. We have a Hepatitis C page there. We hope to get our website running again soon. Uh, Facebook, www.facebook.com slash hepcgi. We'll get you to our Hepatitis C page. If you need any help, please come see me there. And I thank you all for watching. I thank you all for following me. And I love you all. I love you so very much. I could never have gone on this journey without you. And I beg you to please get tested. Everybody, get tested, get tested, get tested. The longer it's in your body, the more damage it does. The sooner you deal with it, the better off you'll be. Tell your friends this. Tell them to watch this. It's my plea to you. I love you guys and I don't want to lose any more. Any more. All right? Have a great day and I'll be back with you soon after my next ocean adventure. Love ya. Bye.